Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV with the Second Coming Watch update. Daniel White III is on vacation. This is update number 373. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to Israel National News, despite falling out over the Syrian civil war, Iran and Hamas are still apparently cooperating in order to facilitate attacks against Israel and to challenge the authority of the Fatah party of Mahmoud Abbas in Judea and Samaria. A report by Stratfor has outlined how the Iranian regime is making use of Syrian proxies in the region to transfer weapons to Hamas cells in Judea and Samaria. This despite the fact that Hamas has aligned itself with the Sunni opposition to the Iranian-backed regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad. In recent days, Jordanian authorities have intercepted two separate groups of armed smugglers attempting to transfer weapons and drugs from Syria, including anti-tank weapons and surface-to-air missiles, heading southwards into the Hebron Hills area of Israel, where support for Hamas is particularly strong. Hamas has received generous Iranian support in the past, although that support was lessened considerably after the two sides fell out over the Syrian civil war. But now, more than ever, with the fall of its allies, such as the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, Hamas is acutely aware of its growing isolation and has turned to Iran for help. Second, according to the BBC, Egypt says 525 people were killed on Wednesday when security forces stormed Islamist protest camps in Cairo after a standoff lasting weeks. Most of the victims died in the capital, but there was violence around the country on the bloodiest day since the pro-democracy uprising two years ago. The final toll is believed to be far higher as scores of bodies are not registered. Supporters of President Mohamed Morsi, who was ousted last month, say more than 2,000 people died. A state of emergency has been imposed by the interim government, which took power after the army removed Mr. Morsi on July 3rd. The U.S. and several other countries have condemned the Egyptian security forces' actions, which Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan described as a very serious massacre. Third, according to USA Today, President Obama said on Thursday that his government strongly condemns violence in Egypt, and he is canceling U.S.-Egyptian military exercises that have been scheduled for next month. Speaking from his vacation home on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, Obama did not suspend any other form of aid to Egypt. He said continued U.S. engagement with the military government in Cairo will help it transition back to democracy. He added, while we want to sustain our relationship with Egypt, our traditional cooperation cannot continue as usual when civilians are being killed in the streets and rights are being rolled back. The U.S. and Egypt had joint military maneuvers known as Bright Star, scheduled for mid-September. Fourth, according to the Times of Israel, America's top general said U.S. military options for stopping Iran's nuclear program have improved in the past year. Speaking to the New York Times during a visit to the region this week, U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Martin Dempsey said that since his last visit to the region, we have better military options than we did a year ago. That's because we've continued to refine them. We've continued to develop technology. We've continued to train and plane. Dempsey was in Israel from Monday to Wednesday for meetings with Israeli leaders, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon, and IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benny Gantz, before going on to meetings in Amman as part of a regional tour. Fifth, according to the Associated Press, a typhoon left one person dead and five others missing as it churned through southern China before weakening into a tropical storm on Thursday. After shutting down business in the financial center of Hong Kong and sinking a cargo ship, Typhoon Utor brought high winds and torrential rain to Guangdong province after making landfall on Wednesday afternoon. It triggered flooding and mountainous torrents that led to the casualties. The typhoon had forced the closure of schools, offices, shopping centers, and construction sites in cities along its path northwest across Guangdong. The Bible says in James 5.8, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. 
You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com.